Hey guys, so today I am checking out another cheap Chinese lens. This one is from Zonlai, which is a brand new Chinese company that I've never heard of, but uh, they were gracious enough to send me this lens for review, so we're gonna check it out. Let's see how it comes packaged first. Here is the box that this lens comes in, and you can see on the front, Zonlai, Zonlai Optics Electronics Discover, made in China. Very, very tiny print. It looks like a wrapped present with a, a little uh, band, red band here. And not much else on the sides. Let's see, Zone Lie lens, nothing else on the back. And then you have some information about the company. Um, now, what's interesting about this is it doesn't slide off. It actually opens, feels like there's a magnet there. So feels very nice and premium for an inexpensive lens. Little user manual, and you can see the lens right away. And on this side, so we get a little generic plastic lens cover with a little lanyard and a lens hood. Very nice packaging, I have to say. That's a nice way of presenting a, a lens. And why they include an extra lens cap, I don't know, but they give you an extra one. You have a cool branded Zonlai lens cover. This feels metal. And then around the back, another cover. So very nice markings. And I do like the font, kind of uh, retro font that they're using. Here is a, an aperture ring on the front. It has distinct clicks, so there's f1.8, f2, 2.8, 4. Very nice, and hopefully you can see the aperture blades opening and closing. Most of the lenses that I review on this channel have declicked apertures, so this is a nice change up. And then you have a focus ring on the bottom, and it is so lightweight. It's insane how lightweight, very smooth, it feels very nice. So um, it is about as light to turn as the lightest manual lens that I've ever tried, which is the Rokinon 21 f1.4. And you can see just how much of a range there is. So you have almost a full 180. In fact, it might be over a full 180 of adjustment. And the barrel does extend and collapse back as you are focusing. Anyway, around the front, you have Zone Lai, the f1.8, 22 millimeter, and 46 millimeter filter thread, and then a serial number. So front lens element uh, appears to be flat. And around the back, metal mount, no electronic connections. This is manual only. And uh, it's not going to be a difficult lens to manually focus, I can tell you right now. So. Uh, seems like a very well-made lens, all metal, feels pretty heavy for the size. So let's put this on the camera and see what we get. And here it is mounted on my A6000. As you could see, it matches the colors quite well. Around the front, you have a nice bluish purple tint from the AR coating, I'm assuming. Now, although the lens is small, it is relatively heavy for the size. So it does make an impact on the overall weight of your camera and lens. So let's take a look at some sample photos and videos using this lens on my A6500.
So that is it for the sample photos and videos. This lens is very interesting, I think. I don't know if you guys noticed in the sample photos, but I did not do any color corrections. I never do any post-processing when I post up sample photos. Those are just straight out of the camera. They are JPEGs. The way that this lens renders colors reminds me a lot of older vintage lenses in the sense that you get slightly warm yellowish tones all throughout, or at least that's what I noticed. I don't know if you guys noticed that, comment down below. But I think it is very unique in that aspect when you are taking photos of people, so faces, portraits, that is favorable because you get warmer skin tones, you get slightly better skin tones, I think. And if you shoot in sunlight, you get a slightly vintage and retro look to your photographs and videos, which is, I think, pretty cool. Using this lens was very easy. The aperture control is nice and smooth, and I do like those distinct clicks. I never knocked it accidentally when I was out taking sample photos. The focus ring, also very, very smooth. I did notice a slight sticking at about 0.3 of a meter as you are focusing on objects closer to you. And that is another thing to notice about the focus wheel as well, is you can see here, you don't have a whole bunch of adjustment for far out distances. The majority of that 180 degree plus rotation is to allow you to nail focus on objects that are very close to you from 0.15 of a meter to about 0.6 of a meter. That being said, this lens was one of the better and easier lenses to manually focus. So if you're just starting out with the manual focus lens, you will enjoy this as long as you're okay with the focus ring being a little bit more loose than other lenses out there. And now for the important bit, let's talk about image quality. This lens at f1.8 wide open is surprisingly sharp in the center. Now at 2.8, it is a little bit better. And as you stop it down further, it does get a little better in the center. Corners are not ideal wide open, but in most cases, those are gonna be bokehed out anyway. But they do sharpen up as you stop down to f5.6 and f8. Chromatic aberration is an issue wide open on this lens. It is pretty noticeable in the corners at least, and even in the center. As you stop it down, that's less of an issue, but it is still there. Barrel distortion is not too bad with this lens. It can be easily corrected in post if you wanted to. Really the biggest issue that this lens suffers from is lens flare, and you probably saw that from the videos in the samples. Now, when I was taking those sample photos, I did not use this lens hood. Now flaring is not really a deal breaker for me. I think it looks kind of cool if you use it creatively. Obviously not ideal if you're shooting into the sun, but you probably shouldn't be shooting into the sun in the first place. So let me summarize this lens by saying this. It is a step above the cheap manual lenses that I've tested in the past. There are a lot of them out there and it's hard to keep track and figure out which one is best. This one really is in the upper tier. I think that the image quality, the fact that it looks a little bit retro is so unique and so nice. Um, the fact that you have a very smooth and usable focus ring is great. Image quality, optically, this thing is a step or two above the 7 Artisans 25 f1.8, which is a $70 lens. Now this thing is about $160, so you do pay a little bit more for it, but I do think that it does make good value for money. If you are looking for a relatively wide angle 22 millimeter lens, that will give you about a 35 millimeter equivalent focal length on a full frame sensor. That being said, I don't think that this lens is necessarily better than the Camland 28 millimeter that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. I tend to prefer that one a little bit more, but I think that this lens would probably fit into my top five cheap prime lenses for the Sony E-mount. It's really good in comparison to the other lenses out there from Seven Artisans, Makey, Newer, etc. And I have to admit that for a premiere lens, meaning this is the first lens that Zonelai has released, it is a very good effort. And if this is any indication of what they are capable of doing, then future lenses from this company are going to be amazing. If you guys are interested in checking out specs and reading more about this lens, I'll post a link to Amazon down below. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.